Let's use tree diagrams to list outcomes and compute probabilities. I love tree diagrams because they are visual representations to help determine outcomes of an experiment. And I am a visual representation kind of person. I like to be able to see things. It really helps me understand. So that's great, but sometimes they can be a little overwhelming. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's make a sandwich. I love me a good sandwich. So you can choose one from each category, and there are four categories. And we are going to create a tree, a di tree diagram to show options. Great. Okay, now, the big thing here is we can only choose one from each category. Uh, category. When we start adding more uh, from each category, the numbers go way up, but that's, that's not part of this section. Okay, so let's start. First one, rye or wheat. Okay, so I'm going to start and say I can have a rye sandwich or wheat, right? That just kind of, that's the beginning of my tree diagram. Then we go to Munster or Colby cheese. I love Munster cheese. Like, I can just eat that like nobody's business. Okay, so now if you think about this, we could have a rye with Munster or a rye with Colby, right? That's what these mean. Or a wheat with Munster or a wheat with Colby. Great, there's the second one. Then we go to... I lost my pen. Ah, there we go. Okay, then we go to mayo or ketchup. Now, I would be willing to say that Mayo and ketchup don't go with everything, but we're going to pretend these are options. So I could have mayo or ketchup, mayo or ketchup, right? Every uh, branch get. let's keep it consistent here. Um, every branch gets, you know, either a mayo or ketchup because that's, this is, these are our options. And then last but not least, ham or turkey, right? This is, this is decision making time. So you're, you're downstairs in the kitchen, you're making yourself a sandwich, and these are just the decisions in your fridge that you have to make. I mean, I made this decision just today for lunch. So now we look at this. These are the options. And if you look at how many things you have on the bottom, the last row of the tree diagram, that is the total number of options. And there are 16. So we have 16 distinct options of sandwiches. Now we can use this tree diagram to answer a probability question. So we're going to fast forward to the question. What is the probability of choosing a sandwich with Munster and mayo? Now remember that probability is the number that will, of what we want over the total options. Now we know there are 16 total options. So how many sandwiches have Munster and mayo? So let's come back. Munster and mayo could be here. Munster mayo could be turkey. So that's two right here. And then um, Munster mayo ham here. Munster mayo here. So there's two here. So there are four sandwiches that have mustard and mayo, right? Do you see that? Mustard mayo, Munster mayo, and ham, Munster mayo, turkey, and on rye, right? So we have four out of 16, which is one fourth or 0.25 or 25%. So that's the probability of choosing a sandwich with Munster and mayo. One more example. Nope, I lied, more than one. But ice cream, one from each category, diagram. Okay, so let's do the same thing. Chocolate or vanilla. The next one has three options. Caramel, sprinkles, or berries. And I know what you're thinking. I also would want all three. And then last but not least, cake or brownie. Cake or brownie. Cake or brownie. Again, why can I not have both? So when we look at this, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve options. So you can see how useful that uh, a tree diagram could you be, right? But if we get to a lot of things, think if we had four, five, six, seven lines, how long this would be, right? Very, very, very crazy. Like, let's do a probability. Chocolate ice cream, caramel topping, side of cake. What's the probability? Well, we know we have 12 total. So how many options of what we want? Chocolate ice cream, caramel topping, side of cake. Oops, wrong way. Chocolate ice cream, caramel topping, side of cake. There is only one option of that. 
So my probability is 1 out of 12. Okay. Oh, and if we want that as a decimal, 8.3, I rounded, and 8.3%. Okay, if you're happy with that, feel free to stop. But I want to go on to something that's a little bit exciting. Um, well, my exciting. Note, in the first example, we had four lines. Each had two options, right? These are the number of options. And we ended up with 16 total options. In the second example, we had a 2-3-2 two, two with 12 total options. Mathematically, if I multiply 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, I get 16. If I multiply 2 times 3 times 2, I get 12. This is called the fundamental counting principle, which gives you a total possible outcomes when we're dealing with one from each piece. And the, the idea is A times B times C times whatever. You multiply the total number from each list. So check this out. We're going to make stuffed peppers. And if you've never had stuffed peppers, oh my gosh, they are so good. I very much enjoy them. Um, and I'm really thinking about trying some of these different combinations here. So we're going to choose one from each category. Again, we probably could choose more than one to be realistic, but it is what it is. So how many different possible stuffed peppers are there? So first you got to choose your pepper. What color? Well, that's four options. And then what are you stuffing inside? Rice, beef, or turkey? Well, that's three options. What kind of cheese are you putting on top? We have two options. And then how are you topping this thing? Ranch, hot sauce, salsa, sour cream? All four. <laughs> okay, so if I take four times three times two times four, that's 90 six so we would have 96 options of different stuffed peppers just using one from each of these categories so thinking about if you would make this tree diagram it would be huge right but this is the idea of the fundamental counting principle is that it gives you a nice quick way to figure out the total number of options and then you can kind of go from there but that's it for this video